Check, 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 one, two. Can you hear me? All right. So in the school, we all our students have one of these grinders, Dewalt tungsten sharpener. Uh, the the reason we make them use these is the diamond wheel in there it lasts about six months, so it'll last them all the way through school. They don't have to keep changing in and out. It's heavy duty. They can't burn it up. It's not, you know, something that's going to last them through school and and later on, and it works fast. So. All right, today we're going to do some uh, 309, 308 wire. Is it 308? 308L on some carbon schedule lady. So this is a test, you know, you're going to see out in the field. You're going to have to do, a, they usually to save money, they'll give you a schedule 80 carbon pipe for 308. So we're going to purge it. We're going to show you how to uh, tack it, put the root in, see how far we can get today in 30 minutes or, you know, a little over 30 minutes. So, you know, when you first start out, same thing. File the knife edge off. I want, I want to have a little bit of something there to let the root hang on to. It doesn't have to be much. And same thing on this one. All right, fitting this up. You got the fit block. Now we got to purge this. We're going to be purging with argon. I'm going to use a loose one eight gap, and I'm going to use this foam. It works a lot better than tape. A lot better than tape. So you take the foam, stuff it in that end. And uh, the purge, we have this, most of the time uh, they have like a, a, most people just take a rag and wrap around the end of the argon line and some tape to diffuse it. But we have this purge kit here. It's a diffuser, goes on the end. It works real well, spreading out the gas evenly. Helps you get a purge good. It's a lot better, a lot more easier than the tape and, you know, bam, we're ready to tack. Most, I do put a little bit of tape on the curtains. I call them curtains. I just put a little bit of tape on that box because I'll peel it back when I'm rolling the, doing the four tacks. I'm going to give it a second to purge. I'm going to turn it up high at first, get some of the oxygen out. You can, I don't know if you can hear that purge coming in there, but we'll turn it down before we start welding. So I'm using 332 wire, 1-8 gap wire, I'm um, 1-8 gap. about 75 amps. All right. Okay, come over here. Awesome, let me show them this. So when I tack this, I'm going to put a little bit here on this side, 
on that wall and then I'm gonna come back over here to this wall and put a little bit and then I'm gonna bridge it over. So I'm not gonna try to go from one side of the pipe all the way over to the other side. Does that make sense? I'm gonna kind of build up my tack over here then put a little wire over here, especially when you're welding at the 12 o'clock position for your tacks. You know, you gotta, you'll get a big glob of tack in there if you're not careful. 75 amps. Stepping on my TIG rig. Nope. nope. All right. Not yet, anyway. All right, here we go. I like to do real small tacks. That way when I get to them, when I, was, when I start on the root, I can just grind them real thin and consume them. Uh, you know, it just goes a lot better that way as far as tying in. You don't have a real big tack to tie in. You won't see a, you know, you don't have to worry about tying in, you're just consuming it. All right, I'll flip the pipe 180 out. I got my tack down there at the bottom. Let's see, there we go. And tack number I leave the gas on there a little bit, help you know keep the oxidation off on it. Can everybody hear me good? How's the mic? Good. All right. Let's go ahead and get this tacked out, and then we can start on the root. Are you ready, Austin? Okay. All right, there we go. We're tacked up, ready to go. This test right here is uh, like number 20 in our pipe welder's Bible. You can just go to over here to, I think it's page 69. Yeah, there it is. This one, it tells you, you know, it gives you tips on the root pass, tips on the hot pass. Um, some of the, this has got like 30 something tests in it, but a lot of the tests at the end of the, when it tells you all the tips and everything, there's a QR code. You can do that and tell you what video is it, you know. We go, we do the whole test in a video, so this is good to have. If you're, if you're just starting pipe welding or about to break out, it's got tests from, you know, shipyards and pipelines from all over the country. All right, I'm gonna put this up. Yeah, does anybody have any questions?
Austin? You have no questions popping up? I'm going to go ahead and tack this up to 6G. Hey, Nick, will you hold this? I think it's, yeah, just let me put a little bit, a little bit more on there. So we got the pool in today. We got the pool in today and it's uh we're filling it up. So next week for sure we're gonna be doing some underwater welding. Uh Donald Baldwin wants to know he says, How do you feed the wire to make sure you get a good root ball? Do you dab it or steadily feed it? Well, a little of both. Just depends on how you know the gap usually is not perfect all the way around. So if you come down here, I'm going to feather this tack. And if I can get the wire in there, then I'm going to try to keep the wire on the inside of the pipe and just steady feeding it. Now, if it, the gap starts to close up, like right here, I'm sure it will, we're going to uh, probably do like a keyhole dip technique. And then you'll see it open up, and then I'll dip in and add some wire and fill it up. So... I'm going to do freehand. For right now, I'm just going to be freehanding the root. Bradley, what's the best beginning jig welder? I'm getting one for my new leather rigger. Mm, I don't know. Probably whoever wants to sponsor us. <laughs> Lincoln Miller. No. Um, I'm a Miller guy. No, it's not available on ebook, I don't think. The Pipe Welder's Bible is not available. You have to, I think we only have hard copies of it right now. Let me feather these tacks. You can keep the questions coming. Hold on. What is it? Well, the full combo course is uh, 13,000 and it's 16 weeks. So it's four months and it's 13,000. We have housing. Um, you know, we have a lot of students that come from out of town and stay down here and we help them with housing. Uh, there's grants you can get, there's scholarships. We have financing available, so. All right, you ready? Let's start this route. Um, one thing I forgot to do real quick was pray. So let's pray real quick. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to, to be here and doing this. And uh, we just thank you for all you're doing for us. And I pray you continue to bless us. In your name we pray, amen. I forgot to put the tape on the side. <laughs> All right, you ready, Austin? Uh, we usually charge a hundred dollars a test.
I'm going to go ahead and feather this tack all the way almost out, and then I can come up over here. I can't see any questions on here. It's all right. Well, you want to just... You want to start yelling out the questions people have? Yeah. All right, Nick's going to help us out. So if y'all have questions, ask them. Yeah, so the, the pool we got, it's like... It's a 12 foot round pool and it's only like three foot deep, but we're gonna be in there welding underwater. I'm gonna have a snorkel and, you know, we're gonna try to root a, a three inch piece of pipe out with 6010. So I'm kind of excited about that. When are we gonna do it, Austin? Monday? All right. Yeah, pool party Monday. Uh, it's, it's closing up on me, so I'm just kind of keyhole and dipping right now. I'm probably going to turn it up. It's a little cold. All right, what's the questions? Having a good purge. You know, a lot of times on the test, you'll have your purge line running. It'll run. They'll have a, a bank of purge bottles like, like that or over there, and you'll have to, somebody will, there'll be multiple people doing tests so they might grab the wrong purge bottle or turn yours off so you know that's somebody might be walking by and trip on it and pull it out the back of your i've seen it happen many times so uh probably the purge and then you know stainless is watery so it takes a little bit more finesse with stainless it's not as forgiving as uh carbon and um you know, you can get pinholes real, real easy, fish eyes. So make sure when you're terminating the arc that you come up on the bevel and run up the bevel wall a little bit. Don't come on the outside of the pipe, but. I was about 75. I just turned it up a little bit. Well, I don't know. This side's, this side's, uh, a little wider so I ran the tight gap first and this one probably just pulled open a little bit can you see on the inside Austin yeah here we'll show you the root we'll see what it looks like anyway let me look at it first maybe not yeah that's good See up top. I'm gonna grind back a little bit on the bottom. 
It's cold. It was cold at the bottom. Yep, I'm glad I turned it up. Stinking. All right, there we go. I appreciate everybody tuning in. This is really for our students that are currently in class so they don't uh, you know, lose everything. That Maybe they'll pick up a few things off these videos and it'll just stay fresh on their mind when, we do, when we're able to come back to school. So, all right, watch your eyes. If you have glasses, just wear them, wear your well, your reading glasses under your hood. That's what a lot of people do. They also have cheater lenses. All right, here we go. You ready? We'll go ahead and grind that tack out. And I'm coming around. Yeah, so that on a tighter gap, definitely need to be around 80 amps. And you know, every machine runs a little different. It just depends on how cold it is outside and those types of things too. Well, you probably have to get a piece of pipe and you can dry run it or you can come up with something, a piece of PVC even, and uh, you know, cut a hole in it. it. A lot of it is just muscle memory. So you don't always have to have an arc to get the weld done. You can just kind of pretend weld for the muscle memory and figure out what's the most comfortable position for you, how you're gonna have to position yourself. So, you know, you can practice it at home uh we have that we have a pipe welders homework where you can walk the cup they got a little practice tungsten you put the piece of paper on the pipe you know and you walk the cup and it draws it's got a little pin insert in there so it's a you can use that we send that home with some students sometimes if they have trouble all right you ready austin So I'm keeping the wire at the top bevel and feeding my wire there and then I'm moving it to the bottom edge with the tungsten.
Any more questions? Power plant, paper mill, it just depends on, they'll run a lot of water lines, Schedule 10 stainless. They'll do a lot of ammonia piping out of stainless pipe and sockets, you know, out in the front of a Berry steam plant, we ran a lot of that. So, it just depends, you know, a lot of plants are stainless. Shipyards have stainless, a lot of the hydraulics on the Austal ships up in the, uh, what is it, aft steering, aft steering and the forward uh, the folks with all that stuff in the front, the windlass, the windlass rooms, all that hydraulics for the windlasses are, yeah, it's like 160 wall stainless. Come look at the tack, Austin. I mean, I grind it pretty much all the way out. It's like paper thin right there, so when I get to it, it just consumes back into the puddle. And the good thing about the foam is, it's uh, the, the argon, when you go to tie in, like your final tie in, you don't have to poke a hole or anything because it's foam, so you don't have to worry about the holes. I would, re I definitely recommend using foam on both ends. It's just quick. Everybody else is taking all this time to tape up the ends of the pipe, tape this, the foam will hold your purge in pretty strong. I mean, foam is the way to go. It's just a cushion. You see the uh, seat cushion over there, the foam? We just tear a chunk off. I would suggest getting some, throwing it in your bucket. Always have some on hand, because they're not always gonna have it, and that's the best that's the fastest way to do it is with the foam. That's about, depends on what size pipe, but you know, you're probably looking at about a half inch. You ready, Austin? I'm gonna thin that down. I'm gonna come on around the top this way and tie in right there. Let me, I gotta do some feathering real quick. Any other questions? Pressure test, they out there they do uh, X-ray on it, and a pressure test. I don't know. I'm not on the hydro crew. <laughs> I wasn't on the hydro crew, uh, but you know every every system has its own recommended. You know the engineers have to sign off certain what they want to hold it to, depending on what the max capacity of that 
you know, whatever pressure they're going to be running at, then they'll hop, usually go above that just a little bit and hold it for, you know, sometimes they got to hold it all day long. All right, you ready? Don't do that. <laughs> My hand was getting a little hot. All right, you ready? Last little bit. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. All right, what is it? No. <laughs> it's all the same. All right, here we go. All right, there's a the root. I'm going to wire wheel it and then put a hot pass in it. What's our time looking like? I've seen a lot of stainless, you know, if it's a real critical job, you have to use stainless everything. Uh, the jack stands will have tape on them, the chain will have tape on it. You don't want any cross contamination from carbon to stainless. Being that we're welding on carbon pipe with a stainless filler, you know, we're just showing this, but, you know, as an example, if you go out in the field and it's a critical job or a critical stainless job, they don't want if you use your grinder on carbon, they don't even want you to touch the, they want you to take that wheel off, get a new wheel, and use it for the stainless. Uh, wire brushes have to be stainless. So there's a lot, you know, there's a lot to learn that you can, that can bite you in the long run uh, with the stainless. So just be, be aware of what's going on around you. If you do get on a job that's well on stainless, know what, they, know what their expectations are and you won't have no problem. All right, I'm gonna turn it up a little bit more. All right, what you got? Well, it's a qualifier for one. It's cheaper for the companies to give qualifiers on this. And then you do have situations to where you actually weld carbon to, you know, if you're running from a system and then you have a valve that's stainless you have to you can't weld to that you know depending on what alloy it is you might have to go from carbon to stainless then to the valve so there's there's some applications but it's you know it'd be down it'd be downstream from wherever the critical area is so if it's pushing water out from the steam you know it'll go from stainless then to the carbon then to you know out if it's if it's trash. The stainless and the chrome and stuff like that has, uh, it's just for corrosive properties. You know, they might be adding certain chemicals in at a certain point through a Y and then, you know, you can use carbon. All right, here we go. I'll turn it up to about a hundred, so we'll see what happens.
Are you standing on my pipe? I mean, my. No. Nope. It started fizzing like it had some money, like I was losing gas. I usually leave the wire closest to the top bevel and then let the let the uh, puddle drag down to the bottom wall. I don't add my wire at the bottom and try to push it up. I use gravity to my favor. Yeah, always on my hot pass, I just run over the wire. I don't usually add a lot of wire on a hot pass. It is your second pass after your root. You know, it's basically a cleaning pass for your root. What's up, Donald? Well, I don't know. Could you see on the camera how it's going around the hole? I could, but with the arc shot, it's not. Oh, yeah. You're not, you can't zoom in. Yeah, I can't. Well, basically, if there's a hole there, let's just say, just say this was the hole right here. I would take my tungsten and I'd kind of start going around it until all the way around the tie-in is liquid. And then I'd start add, I'd pull my tungsten back here and I'd add my wire in the front and then it would drop in. And it'd be, you know, it's a good tie-in that way. Yeah, feather it out like I did. A hundred. This is a number eight cup, so it's a little bit smaller. I did push my tungsten in a little bit more when I'm freehanding. I mean, when I'm walking the cup, it just helps, you know, where you're not dipping it as bad and you get a little more straight down in with it. How many people got their stimulus check today? Anybody? I might. I'll probably do the cap tomorrow and I was going to do one side of the cap, a single bead stringer. 
And then the other side of the cap, I'll do a, a two bead stringer and show you how to do a one bead on 6G. If a piece of the tungsten breaks off in there, now if you just hit the top of the puddle and you hear it just, you know, you don't have to, I don't think you have to. Now if you, if you dip your tungsten and the arc goes out and then you have to pull it away, there's a piece of tungsten in there guaranteed. You do need to grind it out. It'll show up on x-ray. So.